Welcome, intelligent viewers, to Science and Spirituality. The human brain is a vastly complex organ, containing some 50 to 100 billion nerve cells. For many years now, scientists have been working to map the brain. That is, to find out what parts of the brain relate to certain functions, and to localize the portions of the brain that give us certain abilities. A natural question that follows from this is, is there a part of the brain dedicated to spirituality? Our guest today is Dr. Brick Johnstone, a practicing neurophysiologist who specializes in the functioning of the nervous system. Professor Johnstone is chair of the Department of Health Psychology at the University of Missouri, Columbia School of Health Professions, USA. Dr. Brick Johnstone has over 25 articles that have been published in such well-regarded publications as Psychological Assessment, Archives of Clinical Neuropsychology, Developmental Neuropsychology, and Neurorehabilitation. He has co-authored the text, Rehabilitation of Neuropsychological Disorders, a Practical Guide for Rehabilitation Professionals. Along with a colleague, Dr. John Stone more recently published research on the sense of spirituality in those with brain injuries. Their findings appeared in the December 2008 issue of the prestigious journal Zygon, which examines topics pertaining to the intersection of religion and science. Dr. Brick Johnstone discusses more about his study in his interview with Supreme Master Television on today's program. He first acquaints us with some related research regarding identifying the specific area of the brain that is connected with spirituality. In the study, they did these spec scans with Buddhist meditators and Franciscan nuns. And that shows what parts of the brain get blood flow. Hmm. And when these Buddhist monks kind of were at their most heightened state of awareness, they pushed a button, they took a picture of the blood flow of the brain. And same with the nuns. And what happened, parts of the frontal lobe became very active, parts of the parietal lobe became very active, and then the right parietal lobe shut down. Hmm. So we got less blood flow. Hmm. Dr. John Stone's research has taken a slightly different track on exploring the connection between spirituality and the brain. What we did is we evaluated 26 people that had brain injury and then we gave them a measure of general spiritual experience. <coughs> and we found that a certain part of the brain, it's called the right parietal lobe, just back here, um, the more that part of the brain is injured, Hmm. or the m more dysfunctional it is, they report higher scores in spiritual experience. So the less the par that part of the brain works, the more spiritual they report. The right parietal lobe is responsible for our sense of individuality and separateness from the rest of the world. And we found that in working with people with brain injuries, which is what we do here in our neuropsychology clinic, people who hurt the right parietal lobe through an injury, a, a car accident, whatever, um, those people have difficulties um, defining and perceiving the self. And I have some pictures I can show you. Those people will ignore the left side of their body. They will have difficulties um, evaluating their own strengths and weaknesses. So for example, I could say, are you good at language? And you'll say, yes, I'm very good at languages as an interpreter. I can say, are you very good in music? And you could say, yes, I'm a very good pianist. Or you mm -hmm. can say, oh, I have no skills. You're able to judge yourself. We asked Dr. Johnstone to further define the scientific conception of the self in the context of the brain. Um, in the neuropsychological sense, if you hurt the right parietal lobe, you have problems defining the self in space. So for example, I'm here, um, I am at six feet from my bookcase, I'm in the chair. Mm -hmm. That defines my physical self. If I hurt that part of the brain, I'm gonna have problems perceiving this body in this part of space. You can say, um, eat all the food in front of you. I'll eat all the food on the right side of the plate, but ignore it on the left side. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't have a sense of my physical sense anymore. There's, that's called the corporal self. And then there's the psychic self, which is who I am as an individual. Our interview with Dr. Brick Johnstone about the feeling of selflessness as regulated by the brain 
and its connection to spirituality will continue after these brief messages. This is Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. We now return to our interview with Dr. Brick Johnstone, a practicing neurophysiologist, as well as a professor and chair of the Department of Health Psychology at the University of Missouri, Columbia School of Health Professions, USA. His research on the sense of spirituality in those with brain injuries appeared in the December 2008 issue of the prestigious journal Zygon, which examines topics pertaining to the intersection of religion and science. We asked Dr. John Stone about the nature of spiritual experiences between people of various religions or cultures, and whether, from his research of the brain, there is evidence of any differences. I think what we're saying is the brain functions the same for the, the overall spiritual experience, but there's probably different cultural interpretations of that experience. Mm -hmm. And an excellent analogy is the brain is neurologically wired to develop language. So you are born and you're going to develop language skills, but that language is going to develop based on the culture you're in. Mm -hmm. So if you grow up in Argentina, you might speak Spanish. If you grow up in the United States, you'll probably speak English. Mm -hmm. The brain is probably neurologically hardwired for spiritual experiences. If you grew up in a Muslim country or a Buddhist country or a Hindu country, that culture will probably um, affect how you interpret um, those spiritual experiences. In a closely related endeavor, Dr. Brick Johnstone is the director of the Spirituality and Health Project at the University of Missouri, Columbia. The program is examining patients' spiritual mindedness or faith in God and their ultimate health outcomes. In general, it's been shown that people who are more religious are healthier. And there's a lot of different theories of why that might be the case. And so there hasn't been really good studies. And what we wanted to do is find out the specifics. So if you come in and say you're religious and spiritual, what is it that makes you healthier? And so we looked at people with brain injuries and strokes and spinal cord injuries and cancer and guard variety health problems to see what specifically is related to better health. Because the bottom line, the more religious you are, the better health habits you have in general. You don't smoke, you don't do drugs, you have good social support. So that's the primary reason people are probably healthier. But we did a study that <coughs> said there's three different ways you need to look at religion. There's the spiritual experience, which is your emotional experience of connectedness to the universe. Mm -hmm. There's religious practices. How often do you pray? How often do you meditate? How often do you go to church? And then the third super important um, aspect is congregational support. Mm -hmm. And usually the more religious you are, the more support you have um, from people in your congregation. So we can walk in, in Rusk Rehabilitation Center right now, and I can walk through every room and I'll pretty much be able to predict who's going to have a better outcome. Mm -hmm. And it's those people that have people there visiting them. Um, and most of the people who will visit somebody in the hospital will be church members mm -hmm. or synagogue members mm -hmm. or temple members, mm -hmm. whatever your your faith is. So what we did is we used the spiritual experience variables, the religious practices variables, and the congregational support variables to predict the mental health of these individuals and the physical health of these individuals. And what we found in general is that your the spiritual experience and the congregational support are very important in leading to both positive health, positive physical health, and positive mental health. So traditions but if you have positive spiritual beliefs and you have people from your relative congregation to help you out, your health outcomes will be good. Dr. John Stone elaborates on other ways that belief in God and spirituality serve a patient who is recovering. As a clinician, all the years I've practiced and most, most health professionals will tell you this, there is clearly something about religion and spiritual experience that helps people cope and basically will, will make it easier for them to deal with their conditions and to get 
better or as much as they can. People with brain injuries, for example, you'll be fine one day, you might identify as a civil engineer, very bright, very educated, that's how you define yourself, and then if you hurt your brain, you're a completely different person. You can't think as clearly, you might have different behaviors, have problems controlling your emotions, um, and religion and spiritual experience will help people cope. Our sincere appreciation, Dr. Brick Johnstone, for sharing your time and knowledge on the brain and its relation to spiritual experiences. We wish you tremendous success in your work to shed more light on this fascinating topic for the general public. Thank you kind viewers for joining us for today's show. Please stay tuned for Words of Wisdom, coming up next, right after Noteworthy News. May you and your loved ones enjoy the best of health and inner peace.